Dear friends, this is Bishop Daniel Thomas of the Diocese of Toledo. Please join me now in praying together our diocesan prayer. Heavenly Father, with the redeeming cross of Christ Jesus, your Son, and the gifts of your Holy Spirit, renew and strengthen us, so that by our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we may foster holy disciples, holy families, and holy vocations, so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. We turn to Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, for her intercession and never-failing prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Annunciation Radio presents Faith Alive, highlighting the many ways Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo provides love and support for those in need. And now, your host for Faith Alive, Executive Director of Catholic Charities in Toledo, Rodney Schuster. Hello and welcome to Faith Alive, the program that shares how the love of Jesus Christ is provided through the ministries of Catholic Charities throughout the Diocese of Toledo. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. And our program today is going to focus on uh, a very important matter in regards to capital punishment here in the state of Ohio and a potential amendment that might be proposed and the importance of it, the significance of it, and ultimately uh, that will focus on the dignity and respect of all human life. Uh, joining us for our first segment is Father Herb Weber and uh, Deacon Ed Ireland. For those of you who don't know, and I think probably most of you know Father Herb Weber, but I'm just going to give a little bio on him. Uh, he's an ordained pe- priest, uh, ordained in the Diocese of Toledo in 1974. He recently retired as founding pastor of St. John the 23rd Parish, where he served for 17 years. During his 11 years serving as pastor of St. Pete's Parish uh, and School in Mansfield, Father Herb did prison ministry and gave talks throughout the state on the death penalty and Catholic social teaching. He spent five years ministering to death row inmates weekly. And as Father Herb said, it was gratifying but intense. I did accompany one man to his execution in 2007, uh, Glenn Benner. Uh, may he rest in peace. And he also saw two inmates exonerated. So, Father Herb, Deacon Ed, welcome to Faith Alive. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. So, I guess first off, uh, Father Herb, from a, a Catholic social teaching perspective, from a Catholic faith perspective, why is the, the abolishment of the death penalty so important? Well, first of all, well, besides the fact it's good to be here, it's good to be alive, and life itself is a gift. Amen. And we believe in a deep reverence for human life. And the, the, the value of life doesn't come from our innocence or lack thereof. It doesn't come from our accomplishments. It comes from the love of God, that God is the one who brings us into existence and because of God's love, uh, we still have value regardless. And so we value all of human life. It's the complete spectrum. And I've learned over the years that if you disregard some aspect of human life, unfortunately, it starts to erode other aspects of human life. And so we have to look at the complete spectrum of whether somebody is the unborn, the uh, disabled, the aging person, the person who's chronically ill or, or uh, critically ill, uh, they all have value. And certainly this was, I, I went back and looked at uh, kind of uh, the turning point of uh, Catholic social teaching regarding human life and the death penalty. And it comes from Pope uh, St. John Paul II when he wrote the Gospel of Life, Evangelium Vitae, in 1995, mm. you're going to have to have a special program uh, for the 30th anniversary of that. Amen. Uh, but anyway, he, he talks about uh, the value of life at all levels. And then, and I, I love the way uh, these official documents are uh, published because they list every paragraph by number. So it's really easy to look up uh, what you're trying to find. So it's paragraph number 56. And basically what the Pope says is we, namely the church, have felt that 
uh, society, I think he uses the word states, Mm -hmm. states or society have a right to take a life to protect uh, the common good, to protect society. But with so many other ways of punishment, that is virtually never uh, a viable alternative anymore. Mm -hmm. It, he basically says, uh, you would never take a human life just out of revenge or vengeance or just to somehow provide closure, which is the, the typical word that people use. <clears throat> but rather, uh, he says, sometimes you would do it for the sake of other people. But in reality, you can protect society without taking a human life. Mm. And so after that was published, the actual catechism of the Catholic Church, which had only been published two years earlier, was already amended. Mm. To, to change it. And Pope Benedict uh, amended it even more, and so has Pope Francis. So it, it has evolved as we understand things, but it, right now we realize there is no need to take human life to protect society. Amen. You're listening to Faith Alive, our guests are Father Herb Weber and Deacon Ed Ireland, who heads up the Jail and Prison Ministry for Catholic Charities in the Diocese. So, Deacon Ed, you are still active in going uh, to jail and prisons on a regular basis and organizing groups. Um, from your perspective, why is this so important? Well, I, I like to look at it as um, uh, a person that goes into a prison uh, is in there uh, for a, a lot of different reasons. But one of the primary things that we are really concerned about is the redemption of the human being. And um, we've had some uh, really good examples of redemption that happened in the prisons. We see those success stories all the time where a person's life is redeemed, their life, their life has meaning, it's special. Um, and they, uh, a lot of these people, um, in some cases, are able to return to society and become protect- productive members of society. And in particular, I think of... Uh, uh, program that we put on at uh, St. John the 23rd with Father Her- Herb Weber and Johnny Harvey, who was a, 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 a person who had committed a couple murder murders early in life and has uh, since um, become a, a great Catholic, uh, a very spiritual person, has redeemed his life and is now in the Columbus Diocese uh, and doing a lot of evangelism, bringing uh, people back into the to um, back into the church and uh, helping with the prisoners uh, that are getting out um, and he has also uh, received special permission to go uh, to death row and to talk to some of those people on death row so that's a life that's i think has been redeemed and so yeah the, uh, there's a lot of reasons why we want to continue to visit these people and be with them, pray for them, and uh, help them to redeem their lives. Uh, the person they were when they came in is a lot different than the person 20 or 30 years later. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, uh, Father Herb, it's the beauty of the Catholic faith is that the dignity and respect of every human life is paramount, paramount for our faith. And you know, I think sometimes we get, the world gets so caught up in you're on this side or this side, but as part of being Catholic, we value and treasure every life. And of course, when a life is taken because of capital punishment, that affects us. I, I like what uh, Ed, Deacon Ed was just saying about redemption, renewal. You do see it happen. I think some people are suspicious of what they would call jailhouse religion. Mm. You know, that somebody is saved or suddenly they turn to religion because they want to get out. The people on death row don't have that. Uh, it's, well, first of all, I don't believe that's true for most of the people that go to church service. I, uh, in the Holy Week just passed, I had a, a Good Friday service at Richland Corrections in Mansfield, a powerful experience uh, with the men there, and it was a good turnout. Uh, it certainly is not just for show. It's it's something that people need. Now, whether or not they continue after they get out, I don't know. But the people on death row, it's a whole different story because they know they're not getting out. So when they discover that there is purpose in life, that God still has a plan for them, and uh, the person, Glenn, whom I uh, assisted when he went to his execution, he had no religion before Mm -hmm. he 
was locked up. Uh, through the help of other people, he eventually found Catholicism. He was baptized by Father Gary Walters, who, who was my predecessor. And I don't know of, of anybody that has had a more profound or deep understanding of the Eucharist than Glenn. Mm. It, in fact, the night before he died down at Lucasville, uh, he and I, and a third person, because he was only allowed to visit two people at a time, uh, we celebrate Mass. Mm. And he had his last communion. <clears throat> Uh, I have no doubt that, as Deacon Ed just said, the person that was executed, and he was fully aware he could not undo the crimes he had committed, but the person who died was not the same one who had done the crimes. There is conversion. We do believe in redemption. And we, as one of the things that Easter season has taught us, right, is is all about redemption yeah. and why Christ is here and why we have our faith. And we don't quit. Yeah. And that, that's part of what I have found about prisons in general. Uh, a lot of the people are just being warehoused. There's, uh, you, you really have to w- help them work hard to say that there's something good could be going on while they're there. But that is very difficult the way our structure is set up. Amen, amen. You're listening to Faith Alive, and our guests are Father Herb Weber and Deacon Ed Ireland. Uh, we are going to have on next, we're going to have on two special guests. One is Allison Cohen, who's the executive director for Ohioans to Stop Execution, or I guess uh, uh, fondly referred to as OTSI. And then after her, we're going to have Bernard Smith, a retired federal prosecutor, to talk more about the subject. We're heading to break. We'll be right back. An apostolate of the Catholic Church ministers to persons with same-sex attractions and their loved ones. They also have an outreach called Encourage, which ministers to relatives, spouses, and friends of persons with same-sex attractions. Endorsed by the Pontifical Council for the Family, our beloved John Paul II said of this ministry, Courage is doing the work of God. Please visit the Courage website, couragerc.org, to learn more and find a Courage chapter near you. The effects of abortion are greater than most people realize. It isolates, hurts families, brings about fear, sadness, and grief. It does not need to separate you from God. If you or someone you know is hurting after an abortion, please reach out to Project Rachel at 419-260-5811 or by going to hopeafterabortion.org. Nothing is too great for God's mercy. Project Rachel is here to offer confidential help on your journey to healing. This is the day. This is the theme for this year's annual Catholic Appeal. Hello everyone, Bishop Daniel Thomas here. Day by day, all of us are blessed by our Lord, and we know that as Catholics, we're charged with sharing our blessings with others. Your participation in our annual Catholic Appeal brings immediate help to individuals and families in crisis with food, counseling, care, and compassion. Your gift assists in Catholic education of our young people, promotes our priestly vocations, provides liturgical resources throughout our diocese, and so much more. This is the day. I invite you this day to please give generously to our annual Catholic Appeal at your parish or online at acatoledo.org. So grateful for your generosity to our annual Catholic Appeal. We depend on your goodness. God bless you. Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. Our program today is is focusing on um, uh, something that has been present in our state for a long time, and that is capital punishment and the death penalty. And today we are speaking to a number of folks about how uh, we as a state might be able to change the or amend the Constitution and perhaps forever abolish uh, the death penalty. Joining us this segment is Allison Cohen, who's the executive director for the Ohioans to Stop Executions. She was born and raised in southwest Ohio, attended Miami University, where she received her bachelor's 
degree and master's degree. Uh, she moved to Cincinnati and became the first director of communications development for Ohioans to stop executions. Today, she's their, her, the executive director there, and she's going to discuss uh, from their perspective and what they're trying to do uh, with uh, this uh, the amendment to the Constitution. Allison, welcome to Faith Alive. Thanks so much for having me. So perhaps share what, what you're doing, what your group's doing, and then, of course, Ultimately, we want to find out how people can get involved that are listening and, and help uh, you know, with this important effort. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to clarify something really quickly. We're not pushing for a constitutional amendment. So oh. the death penalty was brought back by the state legislature in 1981, and we are looking to repeal that legislation, that statute that has been on our books for 41 years at this point. Okay. Um, So actually two weeks ago, a bill was introduced in the Senate, Senate Bill 101, and that bill has the most bipartisan support that any death penalty repeal legislation has ever had. So there are five Republican senators on that bill and seven Democrats. And we are seeing more and more and more support on both sides of the aisle for abolishing the death penalty. And I have to say, a big reason we've seen that shift is because of a pro-life ethic. Mm. Republicans and Democrats, some Democrats, are waking up to the fact that the death penalty is totally at odds with the belief that life begins at conception and ends with natural death, with no exception. And so we are supporting that legislation. We have a robust grassroots effort of all kinds of people, all backgrounds, all beliefs, and we are hoping that this session will be the time that we finally repeal this wasteful and broken system. And what can people do right now, Allison, to support this? How can their voices be heard? Who should they contact? How should they contact them? Because I know when elected officials hear the voice of the people, uh, they will listen, and it will help them in their decisions to make sure they're representing the voice of the people. You're, you're absolutely correct. And, and we can really boil down our campaign to getting folks to contact their legislators. Um, the more people, um, the more legislators hear from their constituents, um, the, the more uh, likely we are to succeed. So we are asking people to contact their legislators. We make it really easy for folks. They can go to our website, OTSE.org, and we have a really simple online tool you can use, and you can fill it out. It takes less than a minute. It automatically finds who your state representative and state senator is and sends that letter on your behalf. So that's one really quick and easy way that people can get involved. But, of course, there are a number of ways that um, people can get involved in this exciting campaign. And we're really inviting people to be a part of history here with repealing the death penalty. You're listening to Faith Alive. Our guest is Allison Cohen, who's the executive director for Ohioans to Stop Executions. Allison, for, for you personally, what's this been like with your journey being the first director of communications and development and now in your role as executive director uh, how has this affected your just your personal journey in getting to this point of hope where this might be repealed? You know, it's really interesting. When I first started working for OTC, um, Ohio was actually known as the Texas of the North. Mm. We were executing people um, every other month, roughly. Um, and, um, you know, at that point, a lot of OTC's work was focused on clemency campaigns. So in the final months leading up to an execution, their last shot was um, clemency from the governor. So we work to support those campaigns through strategic communication efforts and similar to what we're doing now, getting people to, at that point, contact the governor to recommend um, clemency for for people facing execution. And it it was tough. It was hard. It was depressing to just you know, really dive deeply into these cases and see all of the issues and all of the questions of innocence. And some of those executions went through. 
and it, it was really, really um, hard work. And um, so, I, obviously, I haven't been working for OTC all this time. You know, I did some other work um, in other advocacy spaces. But when I returned to this work in 2020, it was a completely different ball game. I mean, it was night and day. Um, you know, Governor DeWine has imposed an unofficial moratorium of sorts. Um, we haven't had an execution in five years. And that pause has really given our state leaders the time to consider, is the death penalty really working for us? And the answer is no, it's not. It's way too expensive. It risks innocent lives. And again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are coming to this from their hearts, from their faith, to say, I believe that life is a sacred gift, and I don't believe that the state should have the power and the authority to take away that life, no matter the circumstance. So the the shift has been radical. You know, I I have always been against the death penalty. You know, I, I raised Catholic and um, I remember, you know, going to school and we had a pro-life speech contest and I was the only person that wrote about the death penalty, um, at that time. But I, I feel a shift in my own community, um, here in Cincinnati, uh, around this issue. And I think that that shift is being felt in Columbus and the state house as well. You listen to Faith Alive. Our guest is Allison Cohen with a hopeful message that the death penalty will be repealed in the state of Ohio. So, Allison, from uh, as best you understand, what's kind of the the next milestone dates of things that are going to be happening till we get to this point where, you know, it it might actually uh, uh, be repealed? Absolutely. So so as I mentioned, our, our bill has been introduced. Um, next, it will be assigned to a committee in the Senate, and then we'll start having hearings. And I, I would invite your listeners to pay attention to the news. Um, you can follow Oxy on social media if that's your thing. We'll always post updates there. Um, and you'll be hearing from um, Catholic voices um, in, in those hearings. You'll be hearing from pro-life voices Um so that those will occur, um, we're hoping, over the next several months. And then we're hoping that we'll have a vote in the Senate and um, that it will move over to the House. So that's, that's the immediate um, expectation. And um, like I said, we're hoping um, in the next two years that this, this will be the time. And Allison, are there any, you know, things that you need or, or OTC needs in the way of volunteers, financial support? Um, what are things that are most pressing for you right now as you to support your efforts in helping us uh, hopefully getting to this point? Well, I'm never going to turn down financial support. So if, if any listeners out there want to generously donate to OTC, we would graciously accept that offering. Um, but as I said, I think that the most important thing that people can do is to contact their lawmaker. Um, we make it easy on our website, but, um, if there, there are ways to contact me and the rest of our staff directly there, um, because, you know, you can set up a meeting with your legislator. We're going to be having in-person lobby days. We're going to be in Toledo a lot, talking to folks on the ground there. Um, so I would just really encourage people to go to our website, explore ways to get involved in the campaign, because we need you. We need your voice. We need your prayers. And um, you, you, you guys up in Toledo, you're going to be really important um, for this campaign to succeed. You listen to Faith Alive, and our guest is Allison Cohen, who's executive director for the Ohioans to Stop Executions. Uh, the website is otse, O-T-S-E dot org, or you can go to social media and uh, you can find them there in ways you can help and support this effort. Uh, I just want to you know, ask Father Herb, you've been involved in this work for so long. Um, yes, early, early on. Yeah, so from what you know, Allison just shared, uh, what is it? You know, how does it hit you? Well, when she talked about uh, ever since she was a child and writing a, a, an essay about uh, the death penalty, I can remember, I'm 75 years old, I can remember as a kid, and that was 
before the Supreme Court decision uh, took out death penalties way back in, what, 67. Uh, but I, I remember uh, opposing the death penalty even as a child. I, I would hear about it, and it bothered me then. Uh, but back to your question of uh, today, I find that there are some people who oppose the death penalty only because they know it's a broken system. Mm. Innocent people are executed. Uh, sometimes there's uh, questions of uh, racism involved, uh, certainly impoverished people. There's uh, even the locale in which you, you live and who are the judges where you happen to be. But we're taking a position not just because it's broken. We're saying the system itself is uh, an antithetical of our Catholic faith and certainly of a respect for life. Listen to Faith Alive, Father Herb Weber, uh, Deacon in Ireland, and Allison Cohen from Otzi are joining us. Uh, Allison, I don't know if you wanted to, to follow up on anything Father Herb just shared. No, I, I don't think so, but, but I'm, I'm heartened to hear that there are other people out there um, who've been against us since they were a kid. And, I, you know, I, I don't even remember what it was specifically that led me to this absolutely rock-solid conviction that we shouldn't be taking away anyone's life. Um, but w whatever that was, whether it was my Catholic education or um, whatever, I'm, I'm grateful because, you know, Father Weber, when you were talking about how um, one act of violence degrades the rest of society, I think that is so true. Um, yep. if, if we are, if we're going to allow state sanctioned violence, what, what kind of message is that sending to our society and to our citizens? I, I just think that's a really important, um, thing to remember the, the brutalization effect of the death penalty. Almost every time I've given a talk on the death penalty, somebody quotes, well, doesn't the Bible say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Mm-hmm. But just uh, about two weeks before Lent began, we had that passage on, at Sunday Mass from uh, the Sermon on the, Route, on the Mount, where Jesus explicitly says, no, <laughs> that's not what I'm right. saying. So once again, if you want to get involved, go to um, otse.org. That's O-T-S-E dot org. Go to Facebook, um, and, and I know Allison and their crew will be, you know, posting things regularly, giving updates, uh, and then contact your elect elected officials. And, and if you go to their website, they will make it easy. We're talking about the repealing of the death penalty. We're going to head to break. We'll be right back. Join us for the Week of the Relics Tour in the Diocese of Toledo. The USCCB is providing relics for Carlo Acutes and Bishop Manuel Gonzalez Garcia. They are the patrons of the Eucharistic Revival. We will begin in Edgerton on Monday, April 24th, second day, Tuesday, April 25th. We will be at St. Michael the Archangel in Findlay, Ohio, in St. John's Delphus on Wednesday, April 26th, on Thursday, April 27th, we will be at Sacred Heart Parish in Bethlehem, Ohio. And Friday, we will be in the Catholic parishes of Sandusky at Saints Peter and Paul Catholic Church. On Saturday, April 29th, you can join us at Christ the King Parish in Toledo, Ohio. Join us, won't you, as we venerate these saints of the Eucharistic Revival. Every day, abortion affects the lives of thousands of women. But for every woman affected, there is a man who has also lost a child. Too often, we as men don't think we can feel hurt or sadness over this loss. But there is help, and there is hope. If you or someone you know has experience with abortion, please reach out to the Joseph Ministry at 419-299-6660 or visit catholiccharitiesnwo.org for more information. God wants you to return to him and to experience the love and mercy that is waiting you as his beloved son. Did you know that no Christian church accepted contraception as morally permissible before 1930? Discover why and how to work with a woman's natural times of being fertile and infertile. Learn a 99% effective method of natural family planning in English or Spanish through classes or home study. 
Search for a class at the Couple to Couple League's website, ccli.org, or call 800-745-8252. Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, and we've been talking this program about the possible repealing of the death penalty in the state of Ohio. Uh, our guests have been uh, Deacon, or Father Herb Weber, Deacon Ed Ireland. Uh, we had Allison Cohen on, the executive director for OTSI. And once again, for those of you who are tuning in, go to otse.org to learn more about how you can participate and help hopefully, to, to repeal the death penalty in Ohio. Our next guest is uh, Bernard Smith, who's a retired federal prosecutor. He also was formerly on the OTSI board. During his 31-year tenure with, a thir- with the U.S. Department of Justice in Cleveland, he prosecuted and supervised public corruption, organized crime, labor racketeering, and appellate cases. Before joining the Department of Justice, he served as a law clerk, to a circuit judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. He received his law degree in 1982 from the University of Michigan, where he was on the law review. He received his bachelor's degree in English and political science as well. So, Bernard, welcome to Faith Alive. Good to be here. Now, I love that you're crossing state boundaries. You know, you were in Cleveland, you're University of Michigan, so that's how important this issue is. It doesn't matter what state you're in, Michigan, Ohio, we've got one focus and task at hand here, don't we? You know, it's good that you raised uh, the issue of Michigan. I'd like to start right there. Um, We can compare Ohio to Michigan. It's often argued by prosecutors in Ohio that they need the death penalty to be able to use it as leverage to extract guilty pleas from first-degree murder defendants. That, in fact, isn't true, and Michigan proves it. Michigan, which is a stone's throw away from where this program is being produced, has not had the death penalty since 1846. That's 177 years ago. What that means is that on a practical basis, on an everyday basis, Michigan's prosecutors for over 175 years have been perfectly capable of litigating their first-degree murder dockets without needing the death penalty as leverage to use in plea negotiations. I'm sure Ohio's prosecutors would agree that they are as equally as talented, resourceful, and gifted as Michigan's prosecutors are. And so if Michigan's prosecutors can get along without having the death penalty, so can Ohio's. It's not needed on a practical basis. You're listening to Faith Alive, and you're listening to Bernard Smith, who's a retired federal prosecutor and former OTSI board member. So, Bernard, in in all of your work, um, from your perspective, is this the closest Ohio has been to repealing the death penalty? Yes, uh, it is. Uh, There was no chance of it uh, in the 80s, 90s, and in the early 2000s. Clearly not. And I would like to uh, spend some time on a couple of practical points that Father Weber alluded to, and I'd like to flesh some of these things out for your listeners. Uh, Father Weber uh, mentioned the issue of convicting and executing the innocent. People should know that since the Supreme Court in Gregg v. Georgia in 1976 allowed capital punishment to start again in this country, that 190 defendants have been convicted of first-degree murder, sentenced to death, and who were later exonerated and found to be innocent. Eleven of those cases have occurred right here in Ohio. Not Texas, not Georgia, not Oklahoma. Right here in Ohio. Uh, Ohio has executed 55 men since 1981 when uh, the death penalty was brought back in Ohio. So if you take the ratio of 55 executed and 11 exonerations, that's a 16% error rate in first-degree murder cases where there is an exoneration involved. Uh, in my view, a 16% error rate is, is absolutely intolerable, where what we are talking about is the life or death of a human being. I'd also like to uh, uh, refer to uh, the issue of racial discrimination, which uh, Father Weber raised briefly. 
There was a 2014 study commissioned by then Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice Maureen O'Connor, which found that if you kill a white person, you are 3.8 times, nearly four times more likely to get the death penalty than if you murder an African-American person. Put differently, in Ohio, two-thirds of murder victims in Ohio are African-Americans. But when the death penalty is imposed, three-fourths of the time is imposed when a white person is killed. Mm. So in effect, what we have said in Ohio, through our actual practice, through our actual deeds, not words, is that killing a white person is regarded as a more serious crime than killing an African-American person because on a systemic basis, the consequences materially differ depending upon the race of the person who you kill. And that idea simply cannot be squared with the idea of equal justice before the law. Uh, I'd also like to point out to your listeners that the capital punishment system in Ohio is incredibly wasteful, even if all you care about is cold, hard cash. If you don't care about the catechism of the Catholic Church, which in paragraph 2267, which was amended in 2018, says that the death penalty is impermissible. And if you don't care about uh, Pope Francis's uh, encyclical letter in October of 2020, paragraph 263, encyclical name Fratelli Tutti, where he reiterated the Catholic Church's position that the death penalty is impermissible because life is inviolable. If all you care about is money, then listen to this. It takes 10 times as much money just to try an Ohio capital murder case as opposed to a first-degree murder case where the state does not seek the death penalty. 10 times the cost. That doesn't count appeals. That doesn't count uh, imprisoning the person for years before they're executed. It doesn't count the costs of the execution process. Just the trial costs are 10 times more than a non-capital murder trial. And yet juries return non-death verdicts 90% of the time. So what Ohio is doing is we are spending millions of dollars every year. We are spending 10 times the amount of money to try capital murder cases to achieve the desired result by the prosecutor only 10% of the time. Any private business that spent 10 times the amount of money to get their desired result 10% of the time will go bankrupt and would be in federal bankruptcy court in short order. Um, In addition, people ask, well, what's what's the difference in cost between imprisoning a person for life and executing them? Believe it or not, it's cheaper to imprison a man for life without parole than to execute him. In most southern states where the studies have been done, it's a factor of about three, about three times as much money to imprison a guy for life as a, as a, uh, it's cheaper as opposed to executing him, which costs three times more. So whether you look at it from the viewpoint of are we executing innocent people or putting ourselves at risk of doing so, racial discrimination, Cost. These are all practical concerns that lawyers think about comparing Ohio to the state of Michigan. The death penalty simply makes no sense, even if you want to ignore what the Catholic Church says and what the popes have said, which, of course, we should never ignore what what our religious leadership has told us uh, is the truth from the Catholic point of view. You're listening to Faith Alive. Our guest is Bernard Smith, a retired federal prosecutor and formerly on the OTSI board. Uh, Bernard, do you think uh, the will is there politically to finally repeal the death penalty? Tough question, Uh, because most citizens, uh, I, I think, contrary to what the facts actually are, they're misinformed. And so when they go to the polls, if, if, the, if a politician, a senator or a representative, takes that tough vote and votes to get rid of the death penalty, they're going to run into some opposition perhaps at the ballot box from people who are in good will but unintentionally misinformed about what the facts really are. Uh, nonetheless, uh, as Ms. Cohen uh, indicated in the earlier segment, uh, we have the most uh, – uh, bipartisan Democrat and Republican Party support for SB 101, which has been recently introduced, than we have ever had. 
And so uh, if we're going to um, generate that political will, we need uh, to repeal the death penalty. What we need to do is exactly what Ms. Cohen said. Go online. Uh, find out who your state representative and state senator are and contact them and tell them you are a pro-life Catholic. And that means from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death and that you want the death penalty to be abolished. Our legislators need to hear that. You know, our church says the moment of natural death. I can assure you that capital punishment is not a natural death. You're listening to Faith Alive, and just an outstanding testimony here by Father Bernard or Bernard Smith, not Father, but Bernard uh, Smith. No, I'm not ordained. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Father, you want to jump in and say a few things. Well, I'm not, I am Father. Yes. But, okay. Uh, just to make it clear, I have talked with many people who fear that if you do away with the death penalty, uh, a murderer, a convicted murderer, will get parole. And fortunately, in Ohio, besides the the death, I'm sorry, the life life in prison, there is now life without parole, which is another option for crimes committed since 1995. So that's been around for quite a while. But people don't realize that uh, when you oppose the death penalty, we are not opposing punishment. Uh, we are not uh, opposing incarceration. Uh, and there are people. And I've met them on death row that I don't know that I would want to have out on the streets again. Many others are converted, but not all of them. And so uh, there are options, legal options, as opposed to death penalty, to still protect society. Amen. You're listening to Faith Alive, and we're talking about the uh, potential to repeal the death penalty here in the state of Ohio. Our guests are uh, Bernard Smith and uh, Father Herb Weber. Uh, Bernard, we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, what is in, you know, anything else that you want to make sure that our listeners are aware and know? I mean, Father just brought forth a, another really, you know, great point that needs to be shared amongst not only the faithful, but with all the citizens in Ohio. Well, sure. Uh, of course, as a former prosecutor, I'm not for letting a, a first-degree murderer walk out the door either. Uh, they should be in prison for a long, long time, perhaps for life. There is one point I'd like to mention which is that the death penalty is an outlier even under secular law. Under secular law, to be allowed to engage in an, in an intentional killing, right? There, it must, one must have strict necessity in order to do so. And there are only three cases of strict necessity that our law otherwise allows. One is self-defense. For example, if somebody comes at me with an unlifted knife and say, I'm going to kill you and they're raising a knife to stab me in the heart, I can pull out a gun and shoot them in self-defense. If there is a mass, sh- uh, second point, if, if there is a mass uh, shooter in a school, the police can race into that school and to protect third parties, to protect the teachers, the children, the workers in the school, they could shoot the unjust assailant with the AK-47 who's shooting teachers and students. That's called defense of a third party who's facing imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. And finally, the only other ex- uh, uh, ex- example of strict necessity that our secular law otherwise allows is soldiers in combat facing an armed enemy in a war. Right? Other than that, those are the uh, only th- three exceptions to the rule or, or that that one must have strict necessity in order to kill, even under secular law. The death penalty simply does not satisfy that strict necessity test that our secular law otherwise requires. Why? Because we now have maximum security prisons and even supermax security prisons that first-degree murderers simply cannot escape from. So the strict necessity that our law otherwise requires to engage in an intentional killing simply does not exist in the death penalty context. I would close with saying this. Both Pope St. John Paul II and Pope Francis have emphasized in their writings that critical point, that the death penalty does not satisfy the absolute necessity standard that must be met before one may morally kill somebody in an intentional fashion. You've been listening to Bernard Smith. Thank you, Bernard. We're going to head to break, and we'll be right back.
It's time for Annunciation Radio's 2023 Spring Campaign. Our theme is Say Yes. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mother Angelica and giving thanks that she said yes. We're having a big dinner and a birthday party on Thursday, April the 27th at the Pinnacle in Maumee. Our special guest speakers are Bishop Thomas, as well as Father Joseph Wolf and Jack Williams from EWTN. To register, visit us at AnnunciationRadio.com or call 419-868-2966. If you recently received our newsletter, you also got a copy of my new book, Faith Over Fear, Lessons from My Life with Mother Angelica, which highlights my own personal experiences with her and how those interactions set the course for my life. I can't wait to celebrate Mother Angelica's extraordinary life with you. Again, for more information or to register, visit us at AnnunciationRadio.com or call 419-868-2966. This is Dale Alquist with a Chesterton Minute. Have you ever heard someone say, since every religion claims to be true, well, then none of them are true? Even though this is not a very intelligent comment, it does not prevent people from saying it. G.K. Chesterton says probably one of the creeds is right and the others are wrong. Logically, most of the views must be wrong. But there's nothing logical to the idea that all must be wrong. Think about betting on a horse. Many people bet on the wrong horse, but some bet on the right horse. And sometimes even the favorite has been known to come in first. But that's the point. Something comes in first. The fact that there are many beliefs does not destroy the fact that there is one well-founded belief. So don't say that the variety of beliefs prevents you from accepting any beliefs. It's not logical. And it's not a very good way to bet, either. Want more than a minute? Chesterton.org Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. And so far on our program, you've been hearing an inspirational, a very factional, and a very, um, uh, just a a really inspiring uh, message from our guests, Father Herb Weber, Deaconette Ireland, Allison Cohen from OTSI, and Bernard Smith, retired federal prosecutor. During break, Allison wanted to just uh, bring forward a, a point from our discussion so far. So, Allison, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that um, there was polling that was conducted by the Terrence Group um, at the end of 2020 um, that polled uh, a number of Republican and Democrat um, Ohioans across the state, and it found that 59% of Ohioans favor life without parole than the death penalty. So that is, that is uh, like I said, a bipartisan majority of Ohioans prefer life without parole. And I also just wanted to mention that we've looked at the results of recent primary and general elections, and people generally do not vote based on whether or not um, a leader is for or against the death penalty. They do vote on whether or not that person is consistently pro-life. So I just wanted to bring that up. Awesome. Allison, thank you. Um, so on our final segment here, uh, Father Herb, Deacon Ed, uh, what are some thoughts that you want to carry forward from this discussion? Uh, you know, and again, I want to encourage you to go to otse.org. That's O-T-S-E dot org. Uh, go to social media. They are there as well. Get involved. There's And the, the most important thing, as Bernard and Allison said, is contact your elected officials where you live and let them know you want the death penalty re- repealed in the state of Ohio. They need to hear your voice. This is important and critical, and uh, now's the time. Now's the time to, to make sure your voice is heard. And as you know, Allison just mentioned, almost 60% of the people in this state favor life without parole versus the death penalty. So, Father Herb, Deacon Ed, uh, some thoughts that you have as we wrap up this, this program and a uh, very important topic. I, I think what uh, Bernard said about this is not the same as Ohio was back in the 
1980s, 1990s. I believe that's really true. This is an opportunity we've not had before. Uh, I think people have suddenly discovered what in their heart they already knew, namely the value of life. I think it was one of those things that once they started to, to realize both the consistency of our respect for life and uh, the desire not to take a life uh, and play God, uh, they started changing their opinions. Uh, I do remember back in the 19, I think the first execution was in 1999 in the modern era. And I can remember being out in a, a prayer vigil out in the January cold, January, February, but it's brutally cold out there praying at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, the wind was blowing. And we had a, we had little candles there that we were trying to keep lit, but we prayed for an hour and it was one of the most overwhelming experiences, but it was, a, I felt like such a minority at the time. Uh, fortunately, we kept on with our work through those years and I don't feel like the, the minority anymore. But, but like that candle, we kept it lit, yeah. and that's what's going on right now. So this is an opportunity. We don't want to miss it. Amen, amen. Deacon Ed, your thoughts. Well, I'd like to um, uh, just uh, recap very briefly what's happening in our diocese. Uh, we have a couple of uh, th- uh, groups that are um, involved in, in uh, death penalty. We have a group called Compassion. Uh, they produce a newsletter that's sent to all the death row inmates across the country. And in that newsletter, uh, you can read powerful testimonies from these people on death row. It shows us that read those stories, the um, conversions uh, and the redemptive stories of these people. And it shows how their lives have changed. And it's uh, widespread across the country. Um, They... Uh, take um, uh, donations from the prisoners. Uh, most, a lot of these prisoners are good painters, and uh, or they write poems. And Compassion sells these items uh, at Ken's Flowers in Toledo, and then they take the money that they get from the, those sales and give them to the victims uh, uh, from these people that are in death row to the victims' families in the form of scholarships so the children of victims can go to college it's i think that's a worthwhile uh venture that's going on in our diocese also uh we've had a couple of appearances from father kakuthi from the cleveland diocese who's come into our diocese he's a lawyer and he's gotten a couple of people off from death row that were unjustly convicted and it gives a very powerful um uh, testimonial, uh, and so he's uh, a, a person that would be uh, great for a, a presentation in one of your parishes if you'd like to do that. And also, Father Herb Weber gives a very powerful uh, story about his time on death row. Um, so, <laughs> when you put it that way, my time on death row, yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my five years, I would be in in the prison for three hours every Friday yeah. for five years. It was powerful. Uh, accompanying Glenn to his execution uh, was an experience I couldn't even talk about for a couple of weeks afterwards. But the story there is really about the brother of one of the victims who forgave Glenn moments before Glenn was executed. And uh, that's a rather powerful story. Uh, we sim- it takes about a half hour to tell the story. I can't do it right now. Yeah. But uh, it's a story, not only conversion, of, but also reconciliation. Well, and we've got probably about four minutes left. What's your message, Father Herb? I'll start with you and then Deacon Ed. To anyone who's listening today, and of course, um, our, this uh, Annunciation Radio carries, a, you know, they have a station in Mansfield. And so obviously there's two federal um, uh, correctional institutes there. Um, your message uh, to, the, to the faithful that are listening. I think the, the first thing is we do have to take it to heart. It's very easy to hear something on the radio to maybe think I, I do want to respond and then it gets put off. So when Allison was saying how easy it is to contact uh, your local representative or state senator, uh, that was good news 
and she, I'm glad it is easy. So I, I do encourage people to do something. But I also think it's a topic that you are allowed to talk about in public, uh, maybe even tell people you heard the program. And I think we want people to... We want people to be bothered in conscience about what is going on. Amen. Deacon Ed? Well, I would say uh, uh, my takeaway, I would like to see people get a hold of the, this Compassion magazine and read these redemptive stories, uh, and um, it'll, it'll move you. Uh, it, it, some of these stories will make you cry. Uh, Compassion, you can get a hold of them at CompassionOnDeathRow.org. Or you can have Father Kukuthi or Father Herb Weber come and speak before your group. Um, also, uh, it'll um, uh, inspire you uh, to go forward to the next step, which is otse.org, to support the, the, repeal, the repealing of the uh, death penalty. Amen. And, and if you want to follow up and say, gosh, I'd love to have Father Herb you know, come talk to our, our parish or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Father uh, Kakuthi come from Cleveland. Uh, feel free to call the Pastoral Center. That's 2446711. Ask for Deacon Ed Ireland or his email address. It's D Ireland. That's Ireland without a D. D I R E L A N at Toledo Diocese.org. You can go to Catholic Charities uh, NWO.org website to find out more. But please reach out to us because uh, this is the opportunity. Um, I just want to thank so much uh, Father Herb Weber, uh, Deacon at Ireland, Allison Cohen, and Bernard Smith for joining us to talk about this real important topic, and that is to repeal the death penalty in the state of Ohio. We can't encourage you enough, uh, from, especially from a faith perspective, from a Catholic perspective, uh, from a dollars and cents perspective, uh, and just from what is right perspective, that now is the time to have your voices heard. And the, one of the best ways to do that is go to otse.org, O-T-S-E dot org. Uh, you can find out how you can get a hold of your elected officials. Obviously, keep in prayer. Um, we can use financial support. So thank you so much. Um, you've been listening to Faith Alive. Until next week, God bless. You've been listening to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster. For more information about Catholic Charities programs and services, visit catholiccharitiesnwo.org. You can listen to this and other episodes anytime on demand on the Annunciation Radio mobile app and at annunciationradio.com.